All right. All right, guys. Well, welcome to another live video here on Facebook. Today, we're going to be talking about the fat loss power of protein. Okay. Now, um, the reason why I like to single out protein is because it's very different than the other two major macronutrients in the entire macronutrient spectrum. Okay. It's got some kind of unique characteristics and it's not only got some unique characteristics, but it's also the macronutrient that, that people under eat the most of, and it can really help with fat loss. So we're going to be talking about why in this video today. Okay. So, um, Protein is really beneficial for fat loss because protein fills you up. And the number one thing that you're battling when you're trying to lose body fat is you're trying to find a way to create a caloric deficit, right? You have to have some kind of way to pull energy out of your stored fat and use that instead of just the calories that you eat. That's really what a caloric deficit is. So it's about moving in a way that you get more activity, but it's also about eating in a way that allows your body to use fat and not just the calories that you consume. Because if you're consistently just burning the calories you consume, you're not gonna be burning body fat, right? It just makes simple math. If I was to buy you know, four uh, things of chicken breast, and I only use three, I'm saving one, right? So I don't pull it out of the, the stored amount. Or if you wanna think it in terms of money, if you constantly make $20,000 uh, a year, let's say, which is a really small amount, but let's say that you make $20,000 a year and you spend you know, only $18,000 a year, then you have $2,000 in savings. It works the same kind of way. So what we're trying to do consistently when we're trying to lose body fat is find a way to keep us full, keep us satisfied, but also use body fat as energy so that we can burn it. So protein fills you up. If we're looking at the different macronutrients, and there's three major macronutrients, carbs, fats, and protein, protein's going to fill you up the most, all right? Second to that will typically be fiber-rich foods, which are usually carbohydrates, and then fats will be sometimes the last one. But it depends a lot on the, the, the nature of your food and, and how it's being delivered as well, okay? So protein fills you up. So if you're gonna consume 600 calories in a meal, and you know one, meal, one of those meals has 50 grams of protein, and the other one only has you know, 15 or 20, the meal that has 50 grams of protein is gonna fill you up faster. Not only is it going to fill you up faster that so that you um, eat less during that meal, but don't eat less like forcefully, but eat less naturally where you actually physically do not want any more calories, but it's also going to keep you full longer. So, you know, that snacking feeling that you get between meals, let's say you just had breakfast and then an hour and a half later you get hungry again, it typically means that you're not getting enough protein because protein will help keep you full longer, all right? So if you're somebody who is consistently snacking because you're hungry and not just because you're bored or stressed, if you're snacking because you're still hungry after a, you know, a major meal, then that's a good indication that you need more protein even if that just means another 10 to 15 grams, okay? So like a good example of that would be maybe you have three eggs for breakfast with a bagel and a you know, glass of orange juice you could either add an additional egg to that, which would be another six to seven grams, or you could have like a, a, a small protein shake that just has you know maybe some milk or some almond milk and some protein powder, um, whatever you wanna do, but get more protein in, that's gonna help you burn more fat because you're going to consume less calories on average than somebody who's eating less protein, okay? So then tip number two, proteins help grow muscle. So when you work out, and this is probably the most well-known claim to fame for protein. When you work out, you break muscle down, all right? The same way when you go outside and you mow your lawn, you cut the grass and it grows back stronger. Or if you're a guy, or even if you're a woman and, and you shave you know, your legs or your arms or your beard, that hair is gonna grow back stronger. It's one of the reasons why when you're you know, young and you shave the first couple of times, it doesn't really grow back that strong, but after a while, it starts to grow back. So muscle works the same way. When you break muscle down, it grows back with tighter bonds and, and usually more muscle fibers over the course of a long period of time if you stay consistent. And protein helps facilitate that growth. And the reason why that's important for fat loss is because the more muscle you have on, the, on your body, the more body fat you're going to burn or you know, the more fat or the more calories you're going to burn at just a you know, what's called basal metabolic rate or just being alive. You know, the calories you burn just being you and maintaining what you currently already have. So protein helps build muscle. If you're somebody who doesn't work out currently or maybe you do work out currently and you're not seeing results in the, in the gym or you're not seeing results on your body, 
could be a lot of different things. You could just need to be more patient. You could need to find a different workout routine that's actually going to help solicit muscle growth, or you could be getting too, too less protein. Um, so you have to make sure that you're getting enough protein and protein helps build muscle, which helps burn fat in the long run. So protein also burns calories through digestion. So what's one of the most unique things about protein is that if you look at all the different types of foods out there, protein and fiber, but mostly we're going to talk obviously just about protein, but fiber does this too. Protein actually takes calories to digest. So let's say that you consume a bagel, uh, three eggs, we'll take the exact same example we used earlier, a bagel, three eggs, and a glass of orange juice, or let's do it this way. Three eggs, a bagel, and cream cheese, okay? So the three eggs, because it has protein, is gonna actually take, let's say, 30 to 40 calories just to digest. Whereas the bagel is gonna take maybe just five calories to digest, and the cream cheese is gonna take maybe just two calories to digest. So as you can see, the protein actually burns calories just so you can digest it and break it down. So the more protein you consume, the more um, the thermogenic effect of food that you get. That's an actual term, and your body will burn calories to digest. Okay, It has to process it somehow, and it has to get that energy from somewhere, and it gets it um, in the digestive system, and it helps actually break down those calories so that they can be absorbed. And protein burns the most calories out of all the macronutrient groups. So if you're trying to get every single calorie you can um, towards the metabolic and the uh, me me metabolic effect of burning uh, food, then you want to prioritize protein. You want to prioritize eating protein at every single meal and getting enough protein uh, every single day so that you can actually make this work for you. Okay, those that eat more protein burn more calories every single day just by this simple law. Okay, and then the very last one is protein displaces calories that are easy to overeat. So the more protein you eat, the fuller you get, which we talked about in number one, and it also displaces other calories you might have otherwise eaten. So, you know, a great example of this is it's, it's difficult to overeat things like steaks and chicken breast and pork chops and, you know, fish fillets, but it's very easy to overeat potato chips and crackers and cookies because those calories really don't fill us up. All right, they're, they're pretty much empty. They're not empty calories, but they don't have a lot of vitamins, they don't have a lot of minerals, they don't have any fiber, and they very rarely have protein. So when you consume more protein, you naturally eat less, and you don't have to force yourself to eat less. Um, I don't know how aware you are of what's going on in the current nutrition sphere, but there's this big movement towards the carnivore diet, where people are just eating meat, and specifically red meat. And while I think that for some people, that might actually be a good idea. Uh, one of the claims is, is that when you're just eating meat, you get a lot less autoimmune conditions or you get a lot less um, inflammation because a lot of the foods in our environment cause inflammation by eating them. They cause inflammation in the gut, in the brain, in the entire body. So the carnivore diet helps minimize the amount of autoimmune response that your body gets to food. So that's a benefit. And while I'm not a huge proponent of just eating meat, at least not yet in my life, I haven't experienced um, the benefits of that yet, what it does naturally do is it helps satiate you so that you're not interested in, eat, in eating calories that you don't need, all right? A lot of us are eating calories we don't necessarily need, and they're not necessarily being felt because of how easy they are to break down in our body. If you eat something like a cookie, it breaks down very, very fast in your digestive system, in your stomach, and your brain really doesn't even sense that it is going into your digestive system. It doesn't get that signal. And yet the calories are still important for adding to the overall effect of the, the balance between calories in versus calories out. So what you wanna to try to do and what protein does naturally is because it's such a dense form of calories and it's such a dense form of um, food, it's like a physically dense, it takes a lot of energy to burn. And so when it takes a lot of energy to burn, your brain signals that to your, or your body signals that to your brain, and you start to get the signals that you're starting to feel more full. If you don't believe me, just go out and eat a meal with protein, let's say 25 grams, and a meal with 10 grams of protein, and, and just ask yourself, how do I feel after this, okay? So to end today's video, I wanna keep it relatively short so you can get on with the rest of your day. The next question is, what and how much protein should you eat every single day? So the easiest way to do this is to take your weight and equate that to grams of protein, okay? So 
If you weigh under 200 pounds, roughly what you wanna to try to do is you wanna to try to get your weight in protein. So I weigh 175 pounds, I wanna to try to aim for about 175 grams of protein a day. Now, it doesn't have to be a perfect system. You don't have to beat yourself up if you don't get 175 grams or your weight in protein. And if you weigh more than 200 pounds, then there's a different rule you wanna follow because trying to get more than 200 grams of protein probably isn't beneficial for you right now. So what I would do if I were you is I would just track how much protein you eat in a single day and assume that's the average and increase that by another 10 to you know, 15 grams and do that incrementally throughout your, you know, your life until it becomes easy to get about your body weight and protein a day. Okay, This is especially important if you're strength training and if you're watching this video and you're trying to burn body fat, you should be strength training, so this already applies to you. So you wanna shoot for that. Now don't worry, again, don't worry about getting it perfect. There's some days where I get about 150 grams of protein, and I'm fine with that. There's some days where I get 180 grams of protein, and I'm fine with that. The goal isn't to try to stuff yourself with protein until you feel sick, it's to increase the amount of protein you consume so that you feel full longer, you promote muscle growth, you burn more calories when you're digesting food, simply just digesting food helps you burn more calories, and you, by eating more protein, you're displacing calories, junk calories typically, that you otherwise don't need, that's going to help you burn fat over the long run. All right, so thanks for watching today's video, guys. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section down below and I'll make sure that after this video is done going live, I will uh, answer those questions for you either on YouTube down below or on Facebook where this is uh, being recorded. All right guys, thanks for watching today. I'll see you in a future video.